Well, the Mammoth Mountain Ski Area and Town of Mammoth Lakes Liaison Committee met on Monday. Sierra Wave Media's Rob Gill filed this report. Mammoth Mountain Ski Area and the Town of Mammoth Lakes held their quarterly liaison committee meeting Monday, January 13th at the Main Lodge of Mammoth Mountain. In attendance was Police Chief Dan Watson, Interim Town Manager Dan Holler, Mayor Rick Wood, as well as Ron Cohen and Rusty Gregory from Mammoth Mountain Ski Area. The meeting began with Dan Holler giving updates on town staffing, zoning codes, airport service, and development impact fees. After the town's items, Rusty Gregory discussed with the committee what was going on up at Mammoth Mountain. And now Sierra Wave TV gives you the highlights of what Rusty had to say concerning the impact of low snowfall and an update on June Mountain operations. Well, the guys that we, uh, the guys that we would usually have plowing snow are the ones that are making snow, thank goodness, yes. and uh, doing that quite successfully. Very proud of, them. of the effort and the results that, uh, that our folks generated during the the holidays with uh, you know decent but not uh, perfect temperatures that we had for snowmaking. Despite that, we kept 17 lifts open, 50 plus trails. Uh, most importantly, all the portals connected all the way to the top of the mountain. So we were by far the uh, had more had, had uh, more train by far than anyone else in California. Felt like being the tallest man in a midget contest, but it's it, right. uh, <laughs> without casting aspersions on short people, it, Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, you know, it's a it was much better than it might have been uh, when we compare to the you know our competition in Tahoe and our friends right. who are running resorts out there. It's been a very difficult year and yeah, right. beginning of uh, you know what appears to be a third year of you know significant drought. So we're hoping that that's gonna hoping that that's gonna change, but planning on it. Planning on it not changing and, and uh, trying to figure out what we're going to do here with uh, about 20% less revenue so far and about 28% fewer visitors so far, and that's and that's trending worse from here. So we'll, uh, we'll see where that puts us in a couple of weeks. Is that compared to last year or, or in comparison to plan? That's really comparison to plan. Comparison to last year, it is. Um, you know, it's not off as much, but uh, it actually, it, as a as of uh, the holidays, we had a quite good holiday last yeah, year. Push, yeah. uh, very strong snow, and so we're probably uh, down even more over the holidays mm -hmm. uh, that, oh, on a year-over-year -year basis because last year we had so much snow over Christmas. And of course, as we remember, uh, right after the uh, Christmas holidays, it stopped snowing almost entirely. So we're uh, we're now catching up, starting to catch up with last year, but mm -hmm. continuing to you know to operate at a deficit to our budget. How the, the overall the events for the holiday? Uh, probably from my own question for now, but were they pretty solid? Other, yeah, other, very successful. Because the town seemed to be busy. Yeah, uh, very successful. I, I think what what we what we've seen in the past, we saw you know this year as well, and that is that you know with lots of snow or with moderate snow, that people will still come when they've got family vacations, and they'll come and you know ski some and ride their bikes some and you know travel around and enjoy the Eastern Sierra they discovered two years ago in 2011 and 12 that there was a lot of things to do besides skiing because there was a lot of reasons for them to look for other things to do besides skiing and uh, this year was no uh, different than that but then once the sort of the regular non-holiday season comes up regular midday weeks regular weekends people need uh, you know good conditions to come back to and uh, I think as Mammoth makes progress towards becoming a more full-blown resort community as outlined in our general plan that there's that much more diversity of things to come for like there are in other longer stay destination resorts and, uh, and as those things uh, get developed that we will have greater economic stability during downturns uh, uh, from a snow standpoint like we've had this year. In the meantime you know we're very reliant not just the company but the community on snowfall in terms of visitation and revenue other than the holiday period. So we'll have Martin Luther King coming up. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that, yeah, it's, you know, it looks pretty good from our pace reports. It's like people are coming up and going to spend time here. And uh, it's a little too early to tell what sort of uh, president's holiday that we'll have. But most importantly, we hope, we hope, the, uh, we hope the forecast change. Yeah, the change. Right. For, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. I mean, California needs the water. And yeah. we certainly, uh, the mountain, uh, uh, needs the wall-to-wall -wall scheme that we're famous for and you know the community and uh, the mountain as well needs the transient occupancy that uh, kind of drives everything so our fingers are crossed. How, how, how did you do for the reopening this year? 
You know, it did well. People were excited. The community felt good about it. And uh, June is off about 58% from uh, from its uh, from its budget of 60,000 skier visits a year, and you know, we'd expect that on a on a, on a year where there where we have very limited snow making over there. Although we uh, guys did a good job there as well. We brought a compressor in from the outside to operate at greater air capacity, the limited amount of uh, snow making capacity that they have because of the limitation of water. Okay. They got a reservoir up there. Yeah, reservoir would we have a we have a yeah, pond, pond. you know smaller than a reservoir, bigger than a bathtub, okay. somewhere in the middle, <laughs> and uh, doesn't give us a lot of water flow. But you know that that yeah. water that's available, the guys put out on the hill and kept things uh, open. We did have to close down chair seven the other day, which is a chair to the top of the mountain. So right now we're operating off of uh, chair two. Yeah. Kids still ski free and uh, still a lot of enthusiasm over there. But you yeah. know, like the rest of the community, we're all a little pensive. Is what waiting it, for snow. They do the big winter festival the first of February. That's right. So yeah. after that will happen. Yeah. Snow by now. It'll certainly be a bigger winter fest if there's the snow. Yes. <laughs> One of the rumors out there, there are many, is that the mountain is out of water and uh, snow making is going to be limited if not uh, non existent. No, the well drawdowns haven't been uh, bad. We've, you know, we, as long as we have uh, good temperatures, you know, we'll continue to make snow. Yeah, the aquifers are holding up very well. Okay. And, you know, we monitor them closely, and uh, no uh, no real material drawdown yet that we think would affect our uh, our, our ability to continue to pump water when the you know when the snows when the weather when the temperatures allow. Mm -hmm. Still open. We intend to keep it open, you know, and uh, as long as Mother Nature will allow. I and mean, we've got we're holding on. Those guys are doing a good job over there, and uh, you know it's been a big hit with the families that have been there. Uh, I'd like to see more than uh, more business than what we're doing, but it's a reflection of the fact that there's just not much natural snow out there. So, you know, unlike June, we've got a lot of water here. Before we, we, we face hard questions at Canyon, Eagle, or June, that uh, we hope Mother Nature steps in and makes it obvious what we should do, which is all go powder skiing. Well, we thank Rob Gill for that. And a couple of stories from Bennett Kessler from the Bishop City Council meeting. A surprise announcement topped that Monday Bishop City Council meeting. After he filled the council in during a closed session, City Administrator Keith Caldwell announced in public that he would leave his job and Bishop at the end of September. Now Caldwell explained that due to the quote, serious health condition of my parents and the need to address these issues, we will be full-time caregivers for my parents, end quote. Now Caldwell and his wife will head back to Georgia in the fall. He said his parents were faced with an assisted living facility but wanted to stay in their home of 60 years. Now for nearly three years, Caldwell has worked as the Bishop City Administrator. He first came to City Employ as the Community Services Director. Caldwell said he decided to announce his departure early so the Bishop City Council would have time to look for a replacement. Now the council did not commit to how they will do that. The last time they used a recruiter, the selection, City Administrator Jim Southworth did not work out. Now after he moved on, Caldwell became the interim administrator and finally permanent CAO. Uh, he brought a stabilizing effect to Bishop City government and council members expressed that the city of Bishop is better off for Caldwell's presence. Officials will take some time to determine their next move. And also from that Bishop City Council meeting on Monday, news on a new court building, a new dispatch contract with Simon's Ambulance, and a tie vote on legislation that would ban plastic bags. Now, first, the court building, the administrative office of the courts, explained to the council that they want to buy just under one acre of land behind City Hall and bordering Warren Street. Now, the project would go through an environmental process and public meetings. The building would mean elimination of quite a bit of parking for the downtown Bishop area. City Administrator Keith Caldwell said it's possible the city could benefit from the state project through the Warren Street Improvement Project. More ahead on this. 
Now, Philip Anaya, Bishop, he sent a letter to the Bishop City Council to gain their support for more careful management of Bishop Creek drainage waters in the face of dry wells in West Bishop. And we will have another story on this coming up in our next news segment. City Attorney Peter Tracy wants to review the issue, and we'll talk about it at a study session on January 27th. The once tension-filled issue of the Simons Ambulance Dispatch dispatch contract with the city of Bishop has settled down. Caldwell said Simons and the city negotiated a plan for Simons to pay off money owed the city of Bishop at $1,600 per month for the next six months. Now the new contract for dispatch services will charge Simons $100 per month instead of $20 per call. Now this is going to be a two-year contract which could be interrupted if a different ambulance service wins the bid in the upcoming county level proposals for ambulance service that covers Bishop. With Councilman Keith Glidewell absent from Monday's meeting, it was a two to two tie on support for a ban on plastic bags. Councilman Dave Stottlemyre and Mayor Jim Ellis opposed the resolution to support Senate Bill 405, which would ban single use plastic bags. Now, Council Members Pat Gardner and Laura Smith supported the resolution. Mayor Ellis suggested they bring up the issue again with a full council. The council also appointed Richard Distel to the Planning Commission and reappointed Commissioner Darren Malloy. We'll be back with more news.